Hello, can anybody hear me? Hello. Hello, can anybody hear me and see me? Please let me know. Okay, well, hopefully everybody finds their way over here. Well, this is not going well. Okay, I'll hang out here for a little bit, <clears throat> just to hopefully people migrate over. I don't know why the other one, oh, there we go. Hi, Aunt Regina. Good to see you. I don't know why. Okay, good, thank you. I don't know why the other stream didn't work. It just wouldn't connect, so I had to start this one. I'm hoping. <laughs> Thank you. I'm hoping people find their way over here from the other one. I'll have to figure out what went wrong. I'm just going to check the other one again, and hopefully people figure it out. I don't know why the scheduled one didn't work. I just can't seem to connect. So I think for next time, I'll have to just do it this way. <clears throat> Does 
doesn't look like people are finding their way over. Oh, there's somebody else. Hopefully everyone else finds their way over here. I'm just going to go check that other one again and hopefully people find this one. Darn you, YouTube. Making it very confusing. Oh, I didn't know that. So the other one wants you to people to sign in. Well, that's okay. So maybe not scheduling it is better. Oh, good. People are finding their way over. I just got a hi, Tori. I just got a text from someone else who found their way over. Oh good, lots of people are finding their way over. Yeah, so sorry everyone, I was just learning that scheduling a live stream probably isn't the best way to do it. My Aunt Regina was telling me that um, <clears throat> it was a little confusing and she had to sign into Google. So yeah, this is my first one too. So it's good to know Hey, Trevor, thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this too. I was pretty nervous, but so yeah, next time I do one of these, I'm going to let everybody know that so I'm not going to schedule it. It's too confusing. It's easier just to go live, I found out. So, so yeah. So what's been going on the last couple of weeks? Well, the last couple of weeks have been very, very busy. Obviously, it snowed, and this week I had, on Wednesday, I went in for my echocardiogram. So that was a lot of fun. And then Thursday, this week, I went to work. And then last week, on Wednesday, <laughs> it is very nerve-wracking. Last Wednesday, I had to go into Kelowna as well to see my movement disorder specialist. And Thursday, I went to work. So, yeah, I had a big nap today. And I just took a shot of Movapo just to help calm the nerves and get me a little bit energized. And I'm just going to check that live stream one more time to make sure everybody's migrating over. Yes, there's somebody else yes. who is on the old one still. This one's not working. Okay. <laughs> Trevor is asking, he was out of the form, is it difficult for Parkinson's with minus eight? Well, sometimes it can be. I like it cold. I tend to run a little hot. So, you know. My wife is like, oh, can we turn the heat up? I'm like, no, I need to go turn it down. So I pretty much wear shorts all winter and in, inside. And then when I go out, um, maybe, maybe at minus eight, I put some long johns on, but not necessarily. Yeah, the fingers get cold, but it's nicer being cold than hot. I would not do well in Mexico or Hawaii. And here in Kelowna, yeah, it gets like plus 30 or more in the summer. 
I drink iced coffee and stay inside with the air conditioning. Yeah, and just for those who you don't of you who don't know Trevor, he likes to put out some baking short videos, so they're kind of fun. We're going to 28 degrees tonight. I don't know what that converts over to Celsius. You know, it's kind of strange here in Canada. We're kilometers per hour, but we weigh everything in pounds and then measure th everything in inches. But Fahrenheit, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't either. So I get my... I get my echocardiogram results on Monday, so I'm hoping to put a video out about that. The technician was able to tell me that, yeah, I do have a heart murmur, and there's a lot, lots of you probably have heart murmurs too, because they seem to go hand in hand with Parkinson's. But apparently I've had the heart murmur since birth, so it's congenital. I don't know if that's good or bad, but you know, probably when I was born, back in the 70s, I'm dating myself there. They, you know, probably couldn't test test the babies for that. So I guess I'll find out on Monday if they're going to look further into it or just give me some pills or just tell me to go away for a year and come back and we'll do another one next year. I have an enlarged aortic valve. Yeah, I don't know that what that means either, but obviously with Parkinson's, as most of you already know, that it affects our muscles. So yeah, it's going to affect our heart eventually in some sort of way. But what I've been doing is taking like about six, yeah about six months ago or so. When was it? When did I renew my driver's license? In December on my birthday. The valve that opens and closes. Oh, okay. I understand. Right. So it's not able to push all the blood through. So yeah, I went to renew my driver's license in December because that's when my birthday is. And they wanted me to go see my family doctor and just get a little, um, just a little medical questionnaire filled out, which I did. It was no big deal. And then my family doctor's all says, well, ICBC doesn't have any sort of standards for a person with Parkinson's to meet. Like there's no, there's no like test, motor test or neurological test. All he did was fill out that I'm just taking medicine to manage my symptoms. But, and then he's like, oh, do you, should I check your, has anyone ever checked your heart? I'm like, no, <laughs> no one's ever checked my heart. So he listens for a good five, 10 minutes. It was probably more like eight to 10 minutes. And he says, oh, you've got a little heart murmur there. I'm going to send you to see uh, a cardiologist. And gosh, yeah, that appointment was made. It's, it's November now. That, that request went in almost 11 months ago. Wow. I waited 11 months for an echocardiogram. But I guess during COVID times, that's normal. So, yeah, the echocardiogram was interesting because you lay on, like you lay on your side, on your left side. So I guess that makes your heart kind of push down and makes it more accessible. And it took about 20 to 25 minutes for the technician to get all the information he wanted. And yeah, nice guy. But yeah, you just kind of lay there and you. I guess it's kind of like an ultrasound. Yeah, well, that's what it was. It was an ultrasound. And yeah. Hi, Carrie. I'm glad you found it over here. That's a long wait. But just, yeah, gosh, I couldn't believe it. And the place was packed. Like, there were so many people. Like, it, it was a big clinic. I'd probably say there was like 15. 20 people working there. And yeah. But yeah, I'll give you guys the update next week. 
and it's it's neat because they they take the they take all their measurements and put all the video online and then your family doctor can look at it the cardiologist can look at it so my appointment was on wednesday and i get my results on monday so that's pretty quick yeah it took 11 months to actually get the appointment but to get the results like three business days later since today is the staff I, I was pretty impressed by that and my yeah nothing like a good echocardiogram to keep things interesting got on oh good dad you found it as well that's good yeah just so everybody knows I'm not going to schedule another live stream like this because I, apparently it was difficult for you guys to sign in. And while I was able to connect with the post that I made, the streaming software just would not start up. It just would not connect with YouTube. So yeah, next time we do a live stream, I'll just sign on like this. It'll just make things a lot easier for everybody. Does anyone have leg pain with their Parkinson's? Yeah, what kind of leg pain do you have, Tori? I had quite a bit in the beginning. Okay, good. I'm glad, Dad. Yeah, hopefully nobody's over there still. Um, I can check one more time. Hopefully, Debbie. I don't know if Debbie found her way over here. Not sure. Oh, oh gosh. Not sure where to connect besides this screen. I am a low techie. I'm just going to answer her. Go to the channel. To Look for it under live videos. I'm sorry for the confusion. Yeah. Oh, good. And made it over. I'm sorry. This was really confusing. And Trevor says, practice on someone. I did practice on this. And when I did run a test simulation, everything connected fine. But I don't know why this one didn't. I like the Christmas lights. Thank you, Carrie. I actually found this little screen at Habitat for Humanity and the Christmas lights came from like the dollar store and yeah everyone I've talked to about this background thinks it's really nice I, I actually quite fond of it but <laughs> that's perfect yeah it's nice to get things second hand and give them a new life Strong, sobbing, aching, restless pain in both sides from head to knees. Yeah, Tori, I got that as well. And it turned out that it was it was like my hamstrings muscles had tightened up. And it turned into a sciatica and it took a long time. It took almost a year to get it away. And I had a physiotherapist who would actually come to the house and bring her table and everything, which was really nice. And she would like push my legs up and try and get them 90 degrees. Up. Oh boy, it hurt so much. And she's like, oh, don't worry, I need the exercise. She was a climber, so it was kind of funny, but yeah. That's what it, that's what it was for me in both legs. My hamstrings had just tightened up so badly it just took months to months and months to relax them and one of them I would get one stretch I would get down on the floor and put my legs up on the wall 
just to simulate someone pushing them up. And yeah, it took a good eight to ten months just to just to get it to go away. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Sherry. Uh, this the scheduled link would just not connect. So the next time I do a live stream, it'll just have to be like this. <clears throat> just let everybody know what's going to happen and then just start it up at the time. My daughter is now having some symptoms. I think she has Parkinson's. Yeah, people are getting it younger and younger all the time. Like I've heard people now commonly getting it in their 20s, and it's just crazy. Like, where does this stuff all come from? It's like the second she's 38. So I was diagnosed in 2017. Oh, boy, math. That would have made me 40, 43. And we were able to trace my symptoms back eight to 10 years. So yeah, I got it in my probably early thirties. And so I found from talking to most people that once they get their diagnosis and think about their symptoms, they're able to trace it back for anywhere from five to 10 years. We were able to trace it back eight to 10, almost to 2006 when I was still working at the pulp mill. But it's like, you don't really, from what I've been told by the movement disorder specialist, is you don't really feel it a lot until you've lost like well over half of your dopamine production. But yeah, I remember writing essays and stuff, and being not a, not being able to type with both hands, like only one hand was working. She's following the same pattern as me. Is there a genetic test for a family gene? Yes, there is. Um, Zach was going to have it done. Gosh, what, what was the name of that company that? There are genetic tests you can order along, online, or you can go through the Parkinson's Foundation. I believe, I believe UBC in British Columbia has a, that's right, yeah, they asked us if anyone, if our kids wanted to have it done at UBC. Uh, I don't know about Colony here, but I know there's a company in the States that you can order it from. I just can't remember the name. Oh, Debbie's here. Okay, good. I'm so glad that you made it over here. Thank you for persisting, even though you're low techie. Uh, I, I was definitely in the same boat. What we're just talking about is a genetic test for Parkinson's for people in your family. And I'm trying to remember the name of the company online that you can order the test from. It's something, it's something like for me. Can't remember the exact name of the company. But if it comes to me, I'll make a comment on the on the video. Okay, so last week I went to see my movement disorder specialist and this time, thankfully, there weren't a lot of changes to be made to my medication. Yeah, no problem, Tori. If I, if I remember the name of the company, I'll let you know. But I'm sure there's a lot. If, if one, 20, that's what it is, 23 and me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jim. That's exactly where it is. 23 and me. See, I don't have to remember. This is the good thing. Yeah, 23 and me. I'm pretty sure that they can. 43. Thanks, sweetheart. I'm pretty sure that they have a test because, yeah, my friend was telling me about it. I haven't looked into it, but they can test you for all sorts of things, like with one, one, one kit. Apparently, you get results pretty fast. 
Okay, yeah, so last week I saw my movement disorder specialist, and this time, you know, usually what happens is, you know, you, you, you make your appointment, and then you wait for it for six months, and it just drags on and on and on, and you're like, I'm not feeling good, and my symptoms are getting worse, and suddenly you're like, you got to wait another three months, and then you're like, should I increase my medication? Oh, I don't know if I should do that or not. And then it drags on and on, and you build up all this anticipation for your appointment that you've bloody well waited forever for. And thankfully, this time it wasn't that kind of situation. Like last time I went, I went in there just like, my God, I can't leave here with something else, which is how I got the Modapil pen, which has been a, a life changer. Like if if any of you want to brave a dopamine agonist, uh, I highly recommend the Modapil pen. I don't know what I would do without it. Like, it's literally made that much of a change in my life. But yeah, I didn't have this situation last time. Yeah, 68 to 80% loss of dopamine. That's right, baby. Yeah, this time I went in there and I'd actually scaled back my medication a little bit, like my regular pills. and. I actually did that by accident, probably because the last six months have been so stressful and so draining. But it was it was nice to go in there and not be like, I need all this attention. That pen is about $5,000? Oh, my gosh. $5,000. Well, you get what you pay for. But well, that's a lot. Wow. Thanks, Tom. Is that for the year? Or is that for like, I don't want to say one month, because one month in Canada is about $800. So I guess that's $9,600 for the year. So yeah, you guys are 30% ahead of us right now. So you're like, if that was 5000 for the year in the U.S., that'd be $6,500 Canadian. I would post the image if I could. Do you have extended medical? Well, when you're not working and your job isn't covering your plan, you have to buy extended medical on your own which isn't too bad 30 shots yeah extended there aren't very many good like okay let me get back to the beginning when i left my full-time job and we looked at every medical every extended medical plan we're talking sun life manu life Blue Cross, and we found this one called GMS. It is the cheapest plan, and it has really good benefits for what you pay for. Like Kaylee and I pay three seventy four per month, and that gets us extended medical, extended dental, travel. But there is a cap on prescriptions. I think the cap is around $2,500 each on prescription. So you think about Movapo, that's like barely, yeah, that's like three months of that. And getting the Movapo covered by Pharmacare is really hard. Like I've been taking it since April, I think March or April. And it's still, I'm still not sure if I'm actually covered or not, but they're, they're covering it under some sort of bridging plan. And, when I was at my appointment, my, my neurologist is like, well, you won't believe the number of faxes and emails we've gotten about trying to get you covered from Movapo. So even if my medical plan covered it, I don't think it would matter much if they did or not, because Pharmacare looks like they're going to cover it, but it's still kind of up in the air. I'm still waiting for a decision. So what I've been telling Bayshore, which is an amazing company, if you do get the Movapple pen and work with Bayshore, you're very fortunate because they call you like at least once a month just to make sure you're okay, which is really, 
rare. I've never had that experience in my life or anything else. And yeah, they just check on you all the time. The pharmacist phones me once a month and my support nurse phones me once a month. So I get a call probably every two weeks from them. And where was I? Oh, yeah, extended medical. Yeah, if you're in Canada and you need extended medical, GMS is the way to go. I've checked probably at least 10 or 12 other plans. And the coverage that you give you, you're just throwing money in the wind. But with GMS, at least, at least you know you're going to get it back. And on the topic of medications, like my controlled release medication has like pretty much almost tripled in price since the inflation surge started. Like I was paying around five or $600 for three months of controlled release. And now it's like the last bill was like 13 or $1,400. It was quite a bit. So yeah, like inflation has caused a lot of things to go up, but you know, to more than double one medication, it's crazy. Does anyone know what new co-patch is? No, I've never heard of that. Tom says 30 shots for $5,000. 30 shots for $5,000? That's crazy. Yeah, so my neurologist was pretty happy. And he's a really nice guy. So I'm still on the wait list. I'm still on the wait list for a deep brain stimulation, which I'm really hoping I get soon. I just, I just don't know how long the modapil will last, right? You know what I mean? You start taking these dopamine agonists and <clears throat> you just don't know how long it's going to last, like how long it's going to be effective. Like the one big problem with the Movapo is that it drops your blood pressure pretty quickly. So once you've given yourself a shot, you pretty much have to have like a drink of water or a little snack right away because your blood pressure drops immediately. So I'm on like pretty much the lowest dose that you can take is one milligram. So I'm on two and they keep, Bayshore keeps asking me if I've moved up to three and I'm like, I've accidentally given myself three a couple times <laughs> and no, I don't want to move up for three up to three all the time because it just drops it down too far. My neurologist prescribed it for restlessness. Is that restlessness in bed when you're trying to go to sleep or is that like during the day? Because restlessness at night, the best thing I've found for that is the, okay, for your legs, okay, so that must be at night. Okay, the best thing I've found at night is the magnesium L3 on 8. Oh, on the topic of sleep, I sure like my comfort linen pajamas. Oh, my goodness, yeah, the comfort linen is just unbelievable like when i wake up in the middle of the night and i'm off i can actually <laughs> pull myself no it's a real thing carrie it's a real thing comfort linen is yeah i don't want to push it too hard on the video but they're having a two for one sheet sale right now so if you need a couple sheets for your bed they're selling them two for one but if you use my code or my link Make sure you order your accessories separately. So if you want, if you want a couple sheets for, you know, two for one, order the sheets on one order. And then if you want accessories or anything else, order them on the other order with my code. So that'll give you 30% off your other order. There's a problem applying both discounts at once in the check out I just found out today from them so they just 
told me to let everybody know. You can still get the 30% off using the code Life with Parkinson's, but you just can't order your accessories or pajamas with the sheets. I'm going to buy the PJs. Well, I, I think you're really going to like them. I haven't found any negative feedback from anybody. But yeah, for me, when I found these guys, it was it was just amazing because getting up at night and going to the bathroom, when you're trapped in bed and you can't move because you're off or your sleeping medication is just, you know, taking control, it feels like a prison. Tom, sorry, I kept logging in and out. Was trying to figure out to post the more rapid prices here in the USA. Well, maybe just post them as a comment when the video is over, or post them in the community page somewhere. That would be really good. I'm curious to know about the prices of the Model Apple in the USA, because I have had a couple people message me and ask me about it. Is it available in the US? How much does it cost? Here in the US, they call it Apple Morphone. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the same thing. That's just what the medication is. And um, point of interest, my neurologist told me that they used to prescribe it for erectile dysfunction. So point of interest. Yeah, I think Apple Morphine is just the type of medication that it actually is. So are you, are you using it, Tom? Like, I've only ever, ever met one person besides myself who was actually taking it. Two for one. <laughs> Two bed sheets for one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, sweet. I can't afford that. It's not on my plan. <laughs> yeah, gosh. I know what you mean. Okay, change of topic then. Yeah, so there wasn't much else my neurologist said to worry about. Just continue on. Well, we talked to him about the driving because. Uh, that's what I also wanted to talk about here, the driving. Gosh, like I drove to work this week and yeah, there was so much ice on the road between my house and Lake Country. Uh, driving in the winter, ooh, I don't know. I think this is gonna be my last winter driving in the winter unless I get the deep brain stimulation and that helps with the driving. And my reaction time is just not what it used to be. And that's the main issue I, I feel driving in the winter because because the car starts slipping on a corner or going downhill. It's just I found I can't hit the brake quick enough or I can't like compensate for the drift with the steering fast enough. So yeah, this will be my last week, my last winter commuting to work. <clears throat> just can't do it anymore. No, I don't want to of a crash. Not that it would be super serious because I'm only driving through the city, but still, when you know something's not working for you, yeah, you, you just gotta pass it up. There's just no choice. And that's the frustrating thing about Parkinson's, especially at my age. It's just like, you fight against something, you fight against something, and you keep fighting for as long as you can, but then in the end, you know you got to make changes. Safety first. Yes, I agree. You move to where there was no snow. <laughs> yeah, but then it'll be too hot, Tom. It'll be too hot for me, and I'll never be able to go outside. West Bank is, West Bank is perfect. <laughs> Turns 40 and I'm freezing. Okay, so 40 must be 
like zero for us. You say that is challenging. Yeah, driving out to the farm, Trevor. Yeah, Trevor just made a good point. A one and a half hour drive out to Trevor's farm, which is the, when I say I'm at the Pinewood Mountain Railroad farm, it's Trevor's farm. It's about an hour and a half from my house. And yeah, it's a tough drive. Like basically when I get there, I have to have a nap or Trevor makes me have a nap. But yeah, at least I can still make that drive. I forget your Canadian. Yeah, okay. Fair 40 is 4.4. So 4.4, yeah, about 5 degrees. I would still be wearing shorts outside, probably. Um, I'm going to be one of those people that wear shorts all year round soon. That's funny. Yeah, so at my appointment, I had a new nurse, which was... I <laughs> like my dad wears shorts. I didn't know he wears shorts all year. Yeah, so at my appointment, I had a new nurse. Uh, she was really nice. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's just nice to get some different input from people. Very well. Having and resting tremors. Oh, okay. Facebook's, oh, pardon me, YouTube says, my feed is having difficulty, so I hope I'm back. I take 50 dash 12 and 4, hoping I can start sleeping better. <sighs> yeah, Debbie, sleeping is a tough one. I take, a, I call it my bedtime cocktail every day. At night, I take my clonazepam. I take some regular CL, so some regular cinnamon. I take some CR. I take uh, 10 milligrams of melatonin. And then, of course, the heart seal oil before bed. Yeah, so every every night at bed, I take my sleep cocktail, and it usually works, right? Like, even with all that, sometimes I still can't get to sleep very well. Like, the bedroom has to be perfectly dark, quiet, no disturbances, and then I can usually fall asleep. I, mean, I actually try and do my exercise in the evening after dinner, because then I do sleep better. But sometimes it's difficult at night to do my exercise. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult after dinner to do my exercises. But I find that's the best time, along with that, and a sleep cocktail. Jerry! Hey, Jerry. I was wondering if you'd pop in. Jerry is probably the first one to post on, on any, any video or, or post I put up. He's the first, usually the first one to comment. It's really nice. I appreciate that. But yeah, Debbie, um, you might need something. I don't want to be the doctor, but you might need something at bedtime extra just to help you sleep better or an increase in medication that might need to be what you ask for. Sometimes I just get two to four hours of sleep, so hoping this is Okay, yeah, I hate it when they call it Parkinsonism. Because the Parkinsonism is like the big window they call it all around Parkinson's, so Jim asks, what is it like on Apple morphine? 
neurologist says it is my next step. Well, we've actually been talking about the apple morphine, and I don't like to, like, basically, the apple morphine is basically a life-changing medication for me. Like, the change that it's brought around in my life, like, when I started it back in March or April, like, I went to see my neurologist basically crying in the appointment, like, you, I can't leave here without something. And not reluctantly, but he did pull it out of the desk and said, okay, we're going to put you on this program. And it's, it's a very rigid program because you got to like meet a lot of their specifications. So that's the only concern that my doctor had was that I had to be a certain age, a certain fitness level, <clears throat> just to be able to tolerate the, the drop in blood pressure that the apple morphine gives. So basically it's really good because when you take your shot in like 10 to 15 minutes, it pretty much spreads through your body pretty quick. And that is, that is the great thing I like about it because it skips your whole digestive system, right? So if you've had, had a big dinner with like mashed potatoes or pizza and your digestive system is blocked up by food, right? You know, when you take your pills, it's not going to, it's not going to help you at all, right? It's going to get blocked out. So that is the big plus about the Mavapopan is it bypasses all that and gets right into your bloodstream and works like immediately. So, hi Jerry. So, being on the apple morphine is really good. I just don't like to take it in the morning because if I do, I just don't feel good the rest of the day. I take my first shot around, just call me Tom, I do. I take my first shot around 10 in the morning, and then if I have a nap at 1, I'm able to skirt through the next dose. I try and keep it to 2 to 3 per day just because I don't want to overdo the apple morphine. But if your doctor says it's your next step, based on my experience with the medication, I think I would jump at the chance. <clears throat> it's just can you, like, it's a dopamine agonist, so there are some nasty side effects with dopamine agonists, but... I haven't had any of them, and that's the only thing I'm concerned with. Like, it might ask you not to drink any alcohol with it because apparently that can set it off. So you just have to try it. Like, I, I think it's life changing. Like, I had a shot about an hour ago, and it still works. So for me, it works for about sixty to ninety minutes, and it's. Yeah, it's just without it, I wouldn't know what to do. Sleeping hard. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tom, the clonazepam is unbelievable. Um, the doc, yeah, one of my neurologists, I went to see a dementia specialist, and he prescribed me artazapine, and that thing was just horrible. I woke up the next morning, and I only took half a pill, and I, it took hours for it to wear off. I missed most of my day till at least noon before I could function. The clonazepam I find is far superior to the mirtazapine. And the great thing about the clonazepam is it has a really long half-life. So even though you've had a good night sleep, it kind of sticks with you the rest of the day and does help with the anxiety a lot. If I'm having a bad anxiety day, I'll take a half a clonazepam just to calm me down if everything else isn't working. <laughs> my life with Parkinson. If he picked that name for his channel, I don't care. If someone types in my life with Parkinson's and finds Tom instead of me, that's okay with me. Look, alcohol, why not ask me to stop breathing too? Well, you're lucky you can still tolerate the alcohol. Yeah, me, it's gone a few years ago. If I have a beer, it feels like I've put concrete weights on, on my feet. It just just ain't happening. I do miss I do miss a good wine. And I haven't found a good non-alcoholic wine. If there are any good ones out there, shoot them my way. Alcohol free beer. Yeah, there's some good ones out there. <clears throat> 
Dr. Bolt prescribed me clonazepam. Try sparkling apple juice. Can you get at Christmas? Yeah, the sparkling apple juice doesn't work out for me very well either because anything with a lot of sugar <clears throat> spikes my anxiety pretty quickly. So I'm pretty much on a low sugar, alcohol free diet. Yeah, that sparkling apple juice is really good, but it's probably got the same amount of sugar as pop or juice. So it would have to be like, I don't know, a dry cider. If that doesn't have a lot of sugar. Yeah, or more. Yeah, no kidding. Hard apple cider, maybe. Does that have less sugar? Yeah, if it's got less sugar, that would be the way to go. I think you can get the dry center. Yeah, I'll look at the next time I'm at Superstore. Yeah, the apples do have loads of natural sugar. And, like, apples are <clears throat> apples are okay. It's things like drinks and chocolate bars, <sighs> which I do love. But the natural sugar bees seems to be okay. Like for like I like my toast with peanut butter and jam in the morning, and now I buy like the low sugar jam or like twice the fruit jam, and the strawberry rhubarb one is actually really good. But for a while there, I was just like putting like peanut butter and then bananas on my toast, which was kind of good. The potassium stick seems to help every day. So this live stream has been really good. I was thinking about wrapping it up after an hour. Just because I didn't know how many people would log on for this, but a lot of people have. It's been really good. Budweiser beer and non-alcoholic Costco. Yeah, the, the Budweiser beer was really good too. I thought their non-alcoholic beer was good. One of them What's that one they sell at a lot of the restaurants and pubs? Odules. Odules is really good. The Heineken, nah, not so good. Uh, the Coors, Coors has one. It comes in like a yellow and blue can. That was pretty good too. Just make sure it's extra cold. Yes. Yes, I like my cold beer and my cold coffee. Now I'll make a cup of coffee and put it in the fridge <laughs> until it cools down in the morning. Because even the hot coffee when I wake up bothers me. That's the funniest thing about Parkinson's is the, um, yeah, it feels like there's like a nuclear reactor inside of me and everything is just heats up. Starbucks is iced coffee. Jerry. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. I appreciate that. Go back and rewatch it for us and hope the live is the start of another chapter in your channel. Yeah, like I feel this live event has gone really well. I wasn't sure how many people would show up. And I think the numbers have been around 20, which I, I, I'm really thrilled with like that people would put aside this time and schedule a live event in their life just to hang out with me and of course everyone else yeah i just wanted to thank everybody for watching the videos and commenting on them and liking them and sharing them like yeah when my son got me to start this channel way back gosh, almost five or six years ago now, I, I never thought that it would be like this. I, I had no expectations at all, but gosh, you know, somewhere around like almost 800 subscribers now, and that just blows me away. Like, and that's one of the reasons I did start this channel, because 
when I got diagnosed with Parkinson's, we looked and looked and looked and there, yeah, there's a lot of like good medical information out there. Like when you're looking around YouTube, like there's a lot of good medical stuff. There's lots of physiotherapists, there's lots of doctors, there's lots of nurses, there's lots of professionals out there, but there were very, very few active channels that we found with people just going through everyday stuff. And that was the big thing that my wife and I and kids were lacking. was like practical daily advice on, well, not advice, but just practical daily interaction with somebody else that has Parkinson's because, yeah, I, I met some senior citizens, but and, and I'm not saying that that's bad. It's just like when you're working full time and you're comparing your experience with someone who's not working full time, you just don't seem to have a lot in common. So I didn't. So I'm glad that there's other active channels out there now as well that I've been able to collaborate with and I hope. And yeah, there is another collaboration video coming out soon. So yeah, my ideal vision for YouTube would be like three to four big channels minimum. That's what I would like to see. I would like to see at least three or four big channels with well over a thousand subscribers and a bunch of smaller channels because I, I don't think the problem on YouTube is yeah I think I don't think the problem on YouTube is the audience I think the problem on YouTube is the lack of content that's out there for people like me and you guys to like interact with I think that's the biggest the biggest problem on YouTube is the lack of content. So I'm hoping more people do start channels. I'm hoping more people make videos on a regular basis. And if there's anybody watching who wants, not advice, but just encouragement, like I'm happy to pass on my tips and tricks to building a YouTube channel because I, I think it's important. I'd really like to see more other channels out there starting and posting on a regular basis. Yeah, I've missed my missed the comments with my big rant. Oh, thank you, Debbie. B.E. Oh, I was hoping B.E. I know who you are. Person with Parkinson's from England. That's right. Gosh, yeah, I haven't seen you for a while. I hope you've been well. I always appreciate your videos. So thank you very much. Yeah, I love my cold tea. Speaker for MLF Foundation or other organization. Oh, hey, Michelle. Jerry, yes, good channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Like, like what I said before, though. I think there's a lot of fantastic information out there. I just think the lacking thing is like channels, like, uh, like. Jeremy McDonald, uh, Jennifer the Wiggles Project, and I think, yeah, I think that's what's lacking is channels like, like ours. Yeah, and yeah. Oh, Tom, you changed your name. Yeah, Tom was putting out videos for a little while. Yeah, feel free to put out more. I'd be happy to watch them. And I know Michelle at Slow Dancing with Parkinson, and she's putting out videos. And yeah, I appreciate that as well. She put out a really good one lately about dating with Parkinson's, which is a big void on YouTube as well, right? There's just not many stuff around. Yeah, I love the Wiggles Project videos. Like Jennifer puts out fantastic videos. Tom, I got a few queued up and ready to publish. Great. Yeah, I look forward to seeing them. Yeah, no, no problem, Michelle. I was thinking you could do some about professional shooting, right? Bring your Parkinson's into the shooting world as well. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would benefit from your experience. You did a fantastic baby. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I love Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy and I are working on a collaboration video right now. His part of the collaboration is already done. Me, I've been out of it the last couple of days. I've just been so tired. I didn't know if I'd make it through this. Yeah, Jeremy's got some great videos. 
the one he put out about him traveling and going to the concert, those were just inspiring. Like, I was just like, man, my anxiety is so bad sometimes. I don't know how he made it to the concert and then sat through it the entire time without leaving and then had that terrible experience of being taken to the bathroom after. Like, that guy is just inspiring. And Jennifer's last video, <clears throat> her talking to her friend about about a big gap that I've noticed in the Parkinson's world is like research for women and women and medication in the Parkinson's community. Like it's great that, you know, Parkinson's is generally a thing that men had in the past, but based on what I've noticed on my channel, anyhow, it almost seems that there's almost the same amount of women who are subscribed as there are men. So I think, research into women's needs with Parkinson's really needs to be hit hard because I don't think it's a male dominated illness anymore, just based on what I've seen. I think there needs to be more research into helping women with Parkinson's because apparently once a month when that time comes, apparently the medication stops working and what Jennifer had on her video. And I'm just like, that's terrible. Like how, how could you leave someone hanging for seven days? once a month without any medication. I just think it's, it's gotta be filled in. Anyhow, that's my feeling. Tori, I'm going to Clint Black December 1st concert. I don't know who Clint Black is, but I think you're very brave. Like when I go to the shopping mall now or with the white spots packed, I just like, I'm out of there. I think Uncle Harold had it too. Yeah. yeah. I think he had Parkinson's as well. Hey, Jeremy. Good to see you. Country music. Oh, okay. Flint Black. That sounds interesting. Well, let, let us know how the concert goes. I'd be interested to see how it affects you. We were just talking about Jeremy's. Hey, Jeremy, we were just talking about your trip to the concert that you went to. That was, yeah, Jeremy's my favorite dude with Parkinson's as well. Tom, I'm getting DNA tested for the gene. Oh, okay, that'd be interesting to find out. That would be a good video topic about um, doing that DNA test. So I hope you tape it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? You got to create good memories. You got to create memories. So you have something to think about when you can't make those concerts anymore. That's why I try and <clears throat> head out to Traverse Farm as much as possible just to get out in the bush and, and do things. I did the DNA test. I didn't have any of the markers. Where did you get your DNA test, Michelle? I was telling people earlier that 23andMe has a good test kit that you can order. Yeah, Trevor doesn't hunt. Uh, a friend of mine, Matt, was able to come, and we called in an elk, and we almost got it. And... <laughs> It was just crazy. We we were calling and calling and calling for the for an elk, and one answered like just as the sun went behind the mountains, it answered. It was far away, and it came in hard, and it was just across the road, probably twenty yards, thirty yards at the most. You could hear it. It was so loud. Yeah, elk is amazing, and there had been no traffic up and down that road all day. Just as the elk was going to cross the road, a truck came up from the bottom like a big truck and trailer, rawr, rawr, bang, bang, and then a truck came down from the top, and the elk took off. It was, it was really ah, frustrating. That was that was our chance, and yeah, the elk was coming. It was coming hard. It it was probably three to four kilometers away when it answered the first time, and it made that ground in less than ten minutes. It was, yeah, 
Yeah, we were pretty upset that night. Head up to my dad. There's a herd in the area. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, it was a bummer. Yeah, if there's someone, if your dad has a friend out there who's got private land and the elk king out on his land, then I would be interested, but I couldn't make that trip anymore if I had to go hunting on public land because I just, it's just too much. It's just too much for me at this point. The great thing about Trevor's place is that there's elk right on his property and they're there every year. And yeah, so... Yeah, for me to go scout out a new area would be very difficult just because of the Parkinson's. Yeah, 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 please do. If they're on public land, uh, pardon me, private land, a lot of people, a lot of ranchers I've found don't like the elk on their land because they stress out the cattle quite a bit. They go pick on the cattle and they want them out of there. Are they t oh yeah, elk is probably a few steps above beef and there's very little fat in it. And if you cook them right, you just have to cook them a little bit lower temperature, a little bit longer, just because of the lack of fat or you just add some olive oil, which I usually do. Did your first video... <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it, Jeremy. No, I haven't. I haven't filmed my <laughs> collaboration video. You sent me yours like the next day. I'll get it done this weekend. I already know what I'm going to say. I just have to do it. Wild game is always better. Wild game, I agree, is always better. This is the first year I've been skunked in probably seven or eight years hunting. So it was probably time that this is the first year I didn't get anything. But to go seven or eight years in a row with an elk every year it is just, it's really hard to do. Really hard to do. So some chest hair. <laughs> Yeah, we love trips to Trevor. Yes, I do too. There's no one in my family with it. Oh, yeah. That was the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> Jeremy's a bad influence. That was the same thing in my family. Like the only person that we could possibly think about that had Parkinson's it was Uncle Harold. And I think he got it, I, as far as I know, he got it later in life, so... It's just a mystery with me. Totally mystery. Okay, Jeremy. There you go. Chest hair, that's all you're getting. Zipping that up tight. <laughs> One chest hair. Yeah, I don't have a lot. <laughs> oh man you guys this has been a lot of fun this has been really good <laughs> I'm not putting that in the collaboration Yeah, I was emailing Jeremy about doing a collaboration. We came up with a topic and he sent me his video the next day. I feel so bad. It's almost been a week now, I think. And a good night, Tori. Thanks for coming on. <clears throat> yeah, so... I thought <laughs> rated mature. I, I I did put down that this was not made for kids, so I think we're covered. 
I'm just going to check my phone just to see if there was <clears throat> anything on here that I wanted to cover that I didn't. <clears throat> No. How often will you be doing a live stream? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. It seems that the interest level is very high. So <clears throat> maybe like, maybe like, I don't know. I don't want to make it like once a month. Then it might become a little bit repetitive. Maybe like every six to eight weeks. Like when I put the poll first out there, there was a lot of interest. So I'm really happy the way this has gone. This has just exceeded my expectations. What about diet? Well, I've been trying to follow the, the mind diet a lot. Like, what? Make this weekly? You really think so? Yeah, the doctor appointment did go very well. This was one of the first ones I didn't go in there crying. <clears throat> yeah, I will save up my questions for next time. Yeah, why don't I'll put a post out and schedule one for like six weeks from now. How about that? Yeah, thanks for watching, Gab. Okay, so yeah, I'll um, I'll schedule one for six weeks. I'll put a post out and pick a day. I picked this on a long weekend because I figured this would be a long weekend when people are home and not really traveling. I don't think a lot of people travel for Remembrance Day. Thanks, Trevor. You have a good night. I'll talk to you soon. Like I don't think a lot of people are traveling. So let's say this is November, middle of November. Okay, so it'll probably be more like six, seven or eight weeks because six weeks from now is the end of December and everyone's going to be traveling. So probably probably like mid-January it'll be then because just because the Christmas holidays take up a lot of time and a lot of people travel and do things at New Year. So I'll schedule one for like mid-January. Yeah, okay. And you can always, like, I, I post everything in my YouTube community space, and then I do a duplicate post on my Facebook page. So if you just, this is a big plug, if you follow me on Facebook, yeah, I think so too, Michelle. We want to see one from Tom. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll get all the, um, all the updates when things are going to happen. I found that just covering Facebook and YouTube community, I seem to pretty much get everybody. I'm not going to open up a channel on Instagram. I don't even understand Instagram and TikTok. I do have a channel on TikTok, but I just kind of post my shorts there because I found that there is a big gap on TikTok as well as YouTube for the same reason. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate that. Good night, Jeremy. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, so if you haven't followed me on Facebook, follow me on Facebook for updates because they'll duplicate the ones in YouTube community. <sighs> so, yeah, so about eight weeks from now, we'll do another live mid-January, and uh, almost lunchtime here in Oz. That's great. Okay, good night, Michelle. I'm going to sign off here in a couple minutes, too. <clears throat> yeah, but everybody who watched this from beginning to end and commented, I really appreciate you making time for me, and Time for everybody else. I'm really encouraged by the chat, people talking to each other. This is all fantastic stuff. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so, un unless you have a question here, I'm happy to answer it. I'm I'm pretty much ready to get going as well. An hour seems to be about good. Yeah, thanks, Tom. You too. Are the linen sheets helpful with hot sleepers? Well, 10 p.m. here in Philadelphia. Well, thanks for staying up, Tom, and watching. I really appreciate it. I would say yes, because the the main part of the sleeping area, Virginia. Yeah, well, thanks for stopping in, Jerry. The main, there's the big squared off section, and it's all very slippery and poly, polyurethane. I, and I, I would say, yeah, I'm a bit of a hot sleeper as well, just because I run a little bit hotter. And I like the polyurethane better than the cotton because the cotton sheets just seem to absorb all the moisture and then you get stuck on them all right, and you sweat on them. So I would say, yeah, Sherry would probably be the best one to ask. She doesn't have Parkinson's, so she's probably a regular. Where are you from? I live in West Bank, British Columbia, Canada. I don't mind telling people where I live because I don't think there's going to be any people stalking a person with Parkinson's. What state is that in? Canada. Canada. We all live in igloos up here. BC, Canada. So we're just north of Washington State. <laughs> igloos in hockey, yeah. Yeah, Kelowna, it's the resort life. That's why we moved here, because it's quiet. <clears throat> and it's nice here, because on the coast where we're living before, between Vancouver and Whistler, oh, my dear Lord, the amount of people on bikes there. You think driving's hard without, mount, without road bikes everywhere? Oh, my goodness. In Squamish, there are bikes everywhere. It was so... Yeah, tough truckers in Canada. It was so hard to drive. I was terrified I was going to hit someone on a bike. There's just so many of them. Yeah, Canada. Yeah, we've got a lot of the world's fresh water. Yeah, surrounded by water here, except it never rains. Like, uh, we, were t we were talking, Hannah and I were talking a couple weeks ago, and we're like, we couldn't remember when it rained last. How far north have you gone? Oh, man, pretty far. I went to Fort St. John hunting one time, and that's pretty far north. Like, usually we would go hunting in Fort St. James, and to get to Fort St. James from where I lived in Squamish a few years ago, it took about 12 13 hours. So it's, yeah, it's nine hours to Prince George from Squamish and then another like three to four from where we would go hunting. But then Fort St. John was a, was even farther north. <clears throat> the only reason we went there was because they they were having a deer ep epidemic. Like, like if you, if you've ever heard about a swarm of locusts, like when I got there, like, it was like, there were so many deer, it was like a swarm of locusts, and the farmers were just like crying. <laughs> You're next to Alaska. We're not back, fools. We're on the 49th parallel. <clears throat> so if you look at Fort St. John, that's the farthest north. I've ever been hunting. And yeah, we went up there for a deer call. Does it get cold? It gets like minus 
20-ish, 25, minus 20, 25 Celsius here in the winter. So we live in the desert, like Kelowna is kind of in like the desert area. And yeah, it gets really hot here in the summer and really cold here in the winter. Yeah, I've never been I've never been to Alaska, but yeah, I wanted to go moose hunting up there. Any hurt can be devastating. Yeah, I met a couple people from Australia a few weeks ago. And they were like, yeah, we're looking forward to the winter. We've never had snow. I'm like, oh, my goodness, why would you come here? Go down to the coast. Go to Vancouver. Medical care good to Canadians. Well, yes and no. Like having a government-funded medical system is good. But then again, on the other hand, like our system is mixed now in, in British Columbia. So you can like say, you know, I waited 11 months for my echocardiogram, but I could have probably had it like the next week if I had gone and paid for it. So while we still have a public system, it's, it's turning out to be more of a mixed system. And that's what I discovered when I fell off a lot. Oh, yeah. Two, 2006 yeah 2006 i fell off a ladder at work and had three operations on my on my right foot and because it was a WorkSafe bc claim they got me into the falls creek surgical center like within weeks of my accident so i had three surgeries like bang 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 to fix my right foot and they all happened really quick because we have a mixed a mixed system now. So while it's good, we have the private side of it. It causes a lot of delays on the public side, which, yeah, I waited 11 months for an echocardiogram, but I probably could have had it like next week if I would paid for it. So, yeah, um, the public system here is suffering. Don't think they get good results. Yeah, just a lot of red tape. Well, when I got diagnosed with Parkinson's, uh, my family doctor kept calling my neurologist, and he actually drove up to Squamish on a Sunday from, from Vancouver to come and see me. So well, that was pretty amazing. But, yeah, yeah, the wait list to see a neurologist in my area, I believe right now is one to two years, and I got in there automatically because... I'm a special case. <clears throat> yeah, we definitely need more neurologists, and we need more neurologists that are. Um, we need need more awareness in general. Like I've had a few, probably like three or four people now who have like sent me messages and saying they were misdiagnosed or had. Uh, unnecessary operations and surgeries because they were displaying symptoms to a doctor that was like, let's say he's a leg doctor, right? And so they're having problems with their legs. And he's like, oh, okay, I'll, let's do an operation on your legs because your muscles are too tight. Yeah. So we need more awareness for doctors in general to figure out Parkinson's symptoms. Like my family doctor, I had been seeing him for something else and he just picked up on it one day. He goes, is your shoulder tight? I'm like, yeah, it's been tight for ages. We're trying to figure out what's wrong. Grab my shoulder, arm and spun it around and says, I'm going to send you to see a neurologist. I'm like, what? So we need more training in general. Like the, the symptoms of Parkinson's are so varied. It's unbelievable because it affects every part of your body. So if it's affecting one part of your body more than the other, you're obviously going to go see uh, an arm doctor, right? I don't know what they're called, but right now. But you're going to go see an arm doctor if you're having problems with your arms. You're not going to go see a neurologist. And so, yeah, a lot of people are getting misdiagnosed and having unnecessary painful operations done on them, and they have Parkinson's. It's just it's another reason I want to see more channels out there 
put publishing videos is because we need more awareness in general, right? Like, yeah, it's very frustrating. These groups, like, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, we need, like, it's, uh, well, the latest figure I heard is like 5,000 people a month in North America getting diagnosed with Parkinson's. It's like unbelievable. And many of them take years to get diagnosed. Yeah, I, I agree, Tom. That's the, exactly the story I'm hearing from people that comment on on some of the videos and posts now. Is that yeah, they're just they don't like my type of Parkinson's is mostly movement related, and it was very hard for my neurologist to to diagnose me and, and to figure out what I had, and so my file went to like the monthly meeting, like to the board because they weren't sure what was wrong with me. And that's how I ended up seeing a dementia specialist because I started having memory problems. Yeah, so I've got like the bad kind of Parkinson's that, you know, the movement disorder specialist wasn't even sure what I had. I would, uh, DAT scan, yeah, I've heard of a DAT scan and I don't really know what it is. I didn't get one. I had two MRIs as part of my diagnosis. So I don't know if a DAT scan is similar to an MRI. <clears throat> okay, Carrie, thanks for stopping in and chatting. It was good to, I was gonna say good to see you. It was good to, it was good to see you. I got to see your picture. Thanks for stopping in, I really appreciate it. Good night, Ann. Thanks for. <laughs> Good night, Ann. Thanks for coming. Oh, it's seven o'clock. Got to take my pills. My doctors would have never diagnosed. I don't think. Yeah, I've heard from other people who have researched their own symptoms because they've been tossed back and forth between doctors and they end up diagnosing themselves and, and nailing it. Yeah. <laughs> you went Parkinson's. Okay, so a DAT scan is similar to an MRI. Yeah, I had the internal tremors really bad as well. That was what the when I started taking the harp seal oil, that's what cleared up. And then when I stopped taking the harp seal oil, the internal tremors actually came back. So that's why I, 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 I don't know if it's worked for other people yet or not. I haven't had any feedback. So I'm assuming that it has worked for other people because I think people would be more apt to say it's not working than if it works for them. Yeah, and those internal tremors are, are just terrible. I've had a lot of messages from people uh, recommending that I try the B1 
the uh, thiamine overdose, kind of like what would they recommend is like overdosing yourself with B1. And I tried it and it was terrible because I had to stop taking my other supplements because it interfered with them. And when I did, like my anxiety level just spiked so high. I'm like, I, I can't take these, this B1. And as soon as I went off the B1, my anxiety calmed down to what it was normally. So yeah, not all the supplements are for everybody. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, when you're shaking inside and you're telling a doctor, Yeah, because the like the Aldova medication, the cinnamon, didn't help with the inside, internal tremors. It didn't like I yeah, it didn't help at all. So I don't know if the internal tremors were from anxiety or it's a symptom of Parkinson's. All I know is that when I started taking the harp seal oil it went away and that was recommended to me by a senior citizen with Parkinson's. So yeah. Their recommendation was really good. And if, if someone wants to see the research on it, like there's something in the harp seal oil that's not in the other omega-3s, like in the fish oil and the krill oil, there's something that the seals produce in their own oil that's in the harp seal oil that you can't get in other omega-3s. So maybe it's that. I really don't honestly know. One neurologist said I had anxiety because I had an ALS here. Oh, that's terrible. That's just terrible. Well, you know, Parkinson's does have a lot of scary things, unfortunately, that go hand in hand with it. And yeah, I'm, I'm afraid of dementia symptoms. I'm afraid of... Um, dopamine agonists and the side effects that they can cause. But that doesn't mean uh, <laughs> we get internal tremors from it. We just get anxiety. We're like little part people with Parkinson's are like little anxiety factories, right? We just like produce anxiety and we don't even mean to. Like we, we could feel perfectly fine and be like producing a large amount of anxiety. And it's just, it's been the most difficult thing I've tried to explain to other people and it's not that they're not being empathetic or sympathetic it's just really difficult to explain very very difficult yeah it happens for no reason yeah internal shakes Equal anxiety. Well, I don't think so, Jerry. I, based on my experience, I don't think there's a relationship between the anxiety and internal shakes in, in my situation. So, you know, Parkinson's seems to be so different for everyone. Like, I could meet 100 people with Parkinson's, and maybe like a handful of them have the same symptom set as I do. Like, I think for like a chronic illness, I think Parkinson's has the most symptoms of any disease that I know because it affects every muscle in your body and it affects every emotion that we have as well. So dopamine just doesn't control our muscles, it controls our thinking, it controls our emotions, it controls everything. Like, yeah, over 40 symptoms, yeah. And yeah, possibly even more like 50 or 60. It's like, so I think that's why it's so difficult to diagnose because people aren't going to say, oh, you've got tight hamstrings. You must have Parkinson's. Like, I don't even know where the internal tremors come from. <laughs> I just realized Tom and Jerry in the chat. Oh, that's good. I miss the old cartoons. I've been doing my homework for some, yeah, so Jerry, you have a 
neurologist appointment coming up soon, right? In January, I think, if I'm correct. There's a bunch of people that do all camps. What? How old were I was 43 when I was diagnosed. 27, May of 2017. Oh, cartoons canceled. Yeah. The, yeah. All oh, right. Counter the yeah. Yeah, I know. They canceled all the good cartoons. Nothing like good old Roadrunner. Or Pinky in the Brain. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, we're not going to talk about politics, so, but I know what you mean. Well, guys, okay, um, yeah, I am, hang on, 1973 is 2022, I am 48 right now, I'll be 49 this year in December, next month, oh my goodness, yeah, I'm 49, no, still 48, turning 49. Forty-eight, and I miss my working forty to sixty hours a week. It's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mad. I know it took me three minutes to calculate my age. Fifty-nine on Wednesday. Wow. Fifty-two. Well, Jerry and I are pretty close in age. <clears throat> I think that's the great thing about this channel is because it's got a large spread of ages, and I found that very good. Like the people with who've had Parkinson's longer than me can like pass on info, and it's nice having such a wide variety of people. Like I've been adding captions to every video that I publish now because there's people in, in like Mexico watching, there's people in Morocco, all over Europe. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I'll, um, I'll schedule it for earlier next time. One of the big obstacles in my life for scheduling this um, live stream next week. <laughs> One of the big obstacles for scheduling this live stream and picking a time is my bird. Like my bird has picked me for its companion and I have to put my bird to bed before I can run the live stream, if you believe, or she'll scream and scream and scream for me. Yeah, it's been nice. Uh, it's been nice talking to everybody. It's actually been really nice. I did. I had no idea how this would go. This was just a shot in the dark, honestly. And it's been nice talking to everybody. That's the thing, right? We don't become very social with Parkinson's, so this has been really nice chatting with everybody. So if I can get my bird to bed, I can start the live stream. Yeah, I bet they do. Yeah, they want their daddy.
But I think I'm going to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah, thanks, baby. I am 48. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the birds are loud. I love my little conure. She's turned into a really good companion and a really good pet. But they are very dominating and very intense. Yeah, thanks, person with Parkinson's. I'm going to sign off as well. Yeah, thanks for staying and chatting. It's, it's been really fun. I, I'm going to look forward to the next live stream. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> so I'm going to boot everyone here, unless anyone's got Anything else I want, they wanted to add? I don't want to cut everybody off all of a sudden. But, um, yeah, I'm going to pack things up. And whoever stayed the entire time, you are amazing. So, good night. Everyone. Let's take this journey together. <clears throat>